are going what is going on with everybody it is your boy eric aka young god coming to you live in the green dungeon giving it to you real raw reggae i am laughing because i don't know what you just drunk <laughs> <laughs> uh, that hit you right there but <laughs> what made a sour patch kid's face but, uh, it's, a hot, it's a hot tea it's ah, very hot <laughs> i see but you might want to you might want to blow on it a little bit what but um hey i got somebody uh special on the other line i will let him introduce himself who do we have here today Hello, my name is uh, Jasper Marcellus, a.k.a. Sauce Malone. Thank you, Eric, for having me. Hey, mm. I want to thank you because I've been doing my research. You don't do too many interviews, so I don't know why you let me interview you out of all people, uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you. No, I just, I, I appreciate how candid all of your interviews are. Um, so, that's why. Hey, man, I appreciate that, man. Are you... Are you <laughs> Are you a fan of doing interviews? Not a fan of doing interviews? Like, what's the reason for the limited interviews? I feel like when you make something, that that's like enough. You know what I mean? If you have to say anything else after that, it's kind of like then you didn't do what you were supposed to do. <laughs> I think that's a real like artist mind state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of artists feel that way. And I guess we could start off this way. I do know mm-hmm. you. You do visual art, if I'm not mistaken, right? And you, yeah. you follow my friend, who's also a visual artist. I don't know. I don't know if you know this nigga or not, but you follow him. You know Spencer? <clears throat> oh, it's white wait, lizard. Uh, Spencer lizard? McMullen, mm. white boy. Maybe not you don't. by name. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. But gotcha. I probably do. I mean, sometimes I just be following random. People, <laughs> so. But he, Spencer's not random. I didn't mean I'm dead, but, no, um, random. Shout out to that, but now he's a random. Shout out to Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> But no, that is very interesting because we went to middle school together. We went to an art school, <clears throat> and he. Did oh wait, the, the, that art school in Florida. What yes. Is it? What's it called? Uh, La Villa. Yeah, but he oh, went to okay. a DA called Douglas Anderson. It was also a high school. I don't know. If okay. What are you talking about? I don't know. Dash, I think is the name of this art school in Florida. In Miami? Ah, uh, no, no, no. We're in Jacksonville. Okay. We're in Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville. So, Jacksonville. Yeah, we're up in Jacksonville. We're up in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. So we went to an art school. He did visual art. I did uh, music, so I was in the symphonic band. <clears throat> oh, what, was it? what did you play? I'm a, I'm a trombone man. Trombone. Woo! Trombone, <laughs> I was in that you bit. Still, you still play trombone? I'm getting back into it. I haven't okay, played in a minute, okay. but I want to get back into it. I was in that bit doing the the, the, the B flat major scale. You feel me? Dun, 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 dun. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's how I met, bro. And kind of going to that school, I went to a black elementary school. So mm-hmm. just a lot of a lot of black things going on then going to a middle school which is diverse this is my first time meeting real white people gay people atheist people stuff that i was just like this is all new to me i'm just used to running around niggas you know what i'm saying so it's very new so just hearing you talk about like how you look at you know you make art if you if you guys see the math words you don't need to uh like you can do your, your job that's just something i've heard a lot of artists saying stuff like that and is that something that you get probably from the visual art side do you think that comes from more of your musical side where that take comes from um, I, I think I mean how many John Coltrane interviews are there John Coltrane's a musician you know what I mean like I I don't know if it's medium specific it's like you know what I mean it's just no I think, <laughs> I think there's a for, I'll give you a great example I interviewed this dude named Alan Resnick he uh, did like a whole bunch of stuff for Adult Swim, but like very. Oh, I, I think I know who that is. Very weird short films, very very yeah. weird short films. And I did an interview with him, and he had this thing on YouTube many years ago called Alan Tutorials, where mm-hmm. people thought they were real, and he would just basically be like in this dingy room, bad <laughs> cell phone, and people thought like he was like a crazy person. They was like, "Yo, this guy like abducted? Like who is this dude?" All alone, he's playing like this character or whatnot, and he never told anybody. And my interview was kind of like one of his first interviews, really talking about it, really confirming that it was him. And uh, his whole thing was basically what you say, you know, it's like you just kind of let the art live. You interpret it how you want to, almost. Does that also play a part that you want people to interpret it how they want to? Yeah, most most times I'll ask people how they feel to see how successful what it is I'm doing is. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, like if someone says like. Uh, oh, that reminds me of triangles, and my intention wasn't for it to even be remotely in that same 
ballpark, I know I need to work on what it is I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, no, nah, for real. Like being in, <laughs> being in that symphonic band, that's when I kind of learned just like I guess looking at music more abstract. So, for example, like he, like my my band instructor, Mr. Banks, he went to Juilliard, very good trombone player, and he would play like the whole band some classical piece or just some piece, and he would be like, guess the name. He'd like a solo. He'd be like, name this instrument. But he was trying to throw us off, so it might be like a muted French horn or something, but it may sound like a trumpet. So you're like, it's a trumpet. Like, he's like, no. So just the way he was telling us, close our eyes, visualize things. And that's when I started to see these shapes, these colors, these different type of things. Have you always been like that? Or have, are you even like that in the first place where you see those type of things in your head? Mm. Mm. What is that? What is there's a name for that? It I is a name remember. for that. It is something, maybe Nasia, I think, because it has something to do with like uh, visuals. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't have that. Um, yeah, I just hear what I hear. Hopefully, <laughs> see what, see what I see. Maybe something like that. But it is pretty abstract for the most part. You know, it's interesting because you say you hear what you hear, see what you see. I was looking at the interview you did with Vice, and uh, you were slandering when you did twenty twenty, like the, the last interview you did, right? When you had the little choker chain on in the, in the picture, I think you did oh that. ID ID was that on, yeah, was that on yeah, Vice yeah. ID or am I tripping? Uh, whatever it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It was on something. Uh, <laughs> it was a part where you you were slandering eyes. You were like eyes are. Oh yeah. <laughs> you you just went like on a rant about I was like this nigga hate eyes. <laughs> so I was yeah. curious like you kind of talked about it, but I wanted you just to expound on that. Even more, well, yeah. I mean, if you don't, mind. I feel like eyes as like a sensory organ to like understand information. They're like very shallow. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you see what you see. Like your room is green. Like your face is brown. Like, and, but like none of these things really tell me anything about who you are. Really, it's just kind of like a surface interpretation of what reality is you know um but it's also kind of funny as like a visual artist because that's like i spend most of my practice thinking about eyes and how they work and whether something is a good painting or a bad sculpture or etc whatever um also in music too like eyes are incredibly important to like sell music like is the album what does the album cover look like what does your editorial press photo look like like who are you etc cetera, etc cetera. so but um I guess there's this David Hammond's piece ah oh, fuck it's like concerto in black and blue or something like that but basically um story goes that is the whole gallery is all the lights are off mm. and basically people walked around with like these flashlights um i don't know it just always inspired me like as a story you know what i mean how to understand what art can be it's like black space like just complete darkness you know what i mean like what do you do if you don't have eyes to depend on you know is there a, another sense that you would say is more useful in in the sense to like understand no, no. smell yeah, yeah, <laughs> smell, <laughs> smell for sure. I feel like smell is like the the sense that we we kind of like don't use enough. You know, mm. like we use a lot, but we don't give enough credit to smell. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you just you made a joke about me like possibly having COVID. Don't have COVID, but <laughs> yeah. niggas who caught COVID and lost a uh, taste of Yo, our sense of taste and smell. Taste. Yeah. You see how many people was going crazy over that? Like, yeah. I knew yeah. niggas that wasn't wearing a mask. They found out that was a side effect. They was like, yeah. mask. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, no, that is interesting. How do you think smell comes into um, appreciating art, whether that be visual, musical, or whatever? Not at all. Yeah, I haven't figured it out. I probably won't ever figure it out. But it's more like admiration. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I do. I will say like when I go when I go out like go dancing or when I go to a concert or something like when it gets like smelly you know what I mean <laughs> like that's how I know it's a good concert <laughs> like a good show you know what I mean 
I feel like, like if it smells too good, I'm like, oh damn, like this this is not this is not it, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we have a <clears throat> six sense maybe. I never thought about this, so this could sound very dumb. It's the first time ever uh, vocalizing this because it's the first time ever thinking about this. But I feel like we may have a sixth sense where it's just the feel. Like you feel, not like actual touching something feel, but more like you feel intensity. You know how you can feel, mm-hmm. like, for example, the whole, everybody's talking about the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing or whatever. Like, I don't know if he felt the intensity before that happened, but you can sometimes mm-hmm. sense something happening. So, for example, mm-hmm. going back to the band or what I was in, we would perform... And then the I was like in the lower level. Then the higher level would perform after us. And we have to sit in the bleachers and watch. And just the composer, Dr. Williams, this dude, when I mean intense, like I, he, it wasn't just like smooth legato stuff. He was uh, very staccato, just very intense. Yeah. And I just felt it. And it, something about that moved me along with the music using my ears. Yeah, so, there's, yeah. there's a name for that. Um, I think it's, I might mess his name up. I'd be so ashamed, ashamed if I did. But um, Barry Harris, this mm. like amazing piano player, is an amazing teacher. But he calls it the ant, mm. and it's like the feeling of this the space between something like the ant, like mm, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dum, and. and I guess that is it's like a feeling. It's not something you could really quantify into like time. Or, or like it's kind of hard to explain in, in yeah general, yeah yeah it's just the end you know but I agree I'm, I'm with you on that <laughs> maybe maybe like 10 cents 10 the 10th cent yeah the 10th yeah. cent for real that's, that's exactly what it feels <laughs> like and like I said I just I've loved music all my life and I know you come from a, a musical family are you yeah. musically are you classically trained excuse me in any instruments no um, I mean, I, when I was in school, you know, I, I did, like, I was in band, but I never had, like, a personal relationship to any of the instruments I played. It wasn't until way later, um, after I started producing, that I found guitar, mm. and that was like, the instrument that I, like, was really, got very serious about. Um, and I studied with, like, three different people but I never went to like an institution, you know. Yeah. Can I tell you why I'm jealous of you and your guitar <laughs> skills? So <laughs> I told this story one of these times on, on here, but I'll say it again. I like for Christmas one time, I think my mom bought me like a guitar, and right mm. up the street there was a music place where they trained you to play guitar, piano, whatever. It was a whole bunch of like, you know, you get one-on-one private sessions. So I'm like, all right, let's do this. So I'm into it for like the first couple months, but I don't know, I got lazy. The frets was hurting my hands. I ain't like it. So the dude obviously seen I wasn't practicing. So he was like, all right, next time you're not reading, you're not like practicing the book. Just come with your own music you want to play and I'll teach you by ear. I'm mm. ignorant, man. I was showing this man songs with no guitar. I was showing this nigga future songs and shit like that. I mean, you can play that on guitar, though. You can, but he was he was like he was trying to figure out where the chord. He was like, "What's going on here?" Because he probably yeah, used to exactly. listen to like, you know, it's like very modal music. Yeah. <laughs> That's his modal. Exactly. He's probably used to listening to actual songs with guitar in them. I'm showing him mask off and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Which I mean, hey, that, that would have been great if I played the flute. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm, I, man, the guitar is something. It seems so difficult, bro, because I feel like the error. No, bro, because like I feel like trombone is also difficult because trombone. It's almost like you're guessing where it's at because you're you're not going to be in the correct spot every time. Compared to a trumpet, you have these vowels where you you know what you're pressing you're kind of just guessing where this is at you know unless you just really mastered it and i feel like guitar is just so like the the margin of error between these small little frets and i don't know it's so hard to me man mm. you don't think so i think i mean not i mean that's how you feel so i'm not gonna tell no, you i feel you like, <laughs> but i feel like guitar is like it's it's like baggage you mm. know what i mean like it's social weight like pre like when you say you play trombone like I'm not really like I don't have much to like judge you on you know what I mean like that's I feel like that's cool you play trombone whereas guitar there's so much like historical like yeah. baggage to it and it it really weighs the instrument down in my opinion 
Mm. Like, no, it's like everyone plays guitar. Who doesn't play guitar? You know what I mean? Or someone's like, yo, I'm going to play an instrument. Like, I'm, I play guitar. You know what I mean? And so much of like guitar music is tied to the guitar. If that, I know it doesn't make, how do I word it? Like, if you play trombone, it's like, there's no like trombone music really like you play music within like a, the concepts of like a, a whole piece i get something. what you're saying you're saying like yeah. guitar solos like, and stuff like that versus yeah, like, like yeah guitar is like such an insular instrument and because of that i really have like ill feelings towards it yeah Man, guitars have cool stories, bro. You ever heard the story about the dude? Oh, what's the dude name? The dude they say he was like the first person to sell his soul to the devil. You ever heard that story? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, what's his uh, name? Man, uh, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Oh, man. Wait, I know who this is. Hold on. Let me look it up. Ah, uh, damn. Oh, shit, man. I, I know who this is. Like, I got it if you want me to say Robert it. Robert Johnson. Exactly. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we don't got it for trombones. And, and, and the devil went tuning up the trombones, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? That's a hard... I don't know. I just feel like guitars... I get what you're saying. I guess I get, like, both sides of the coins. I get what you're saying. And I guess, like, with that same token... You can look at it as it's so prestige, and you have the solos and all the legendary guitar players. But you like, nah, you. <laughs> it's overrated. Guitar is like so overrated. You top, want, top, <laughs> top one. Okay, you want to know my most underrated instrument? Bassoon. I love, I love, uh, yeah, I love a bassoon and the oboe. Oboe's fire too. Oboes, something about it just sounds like Middle Eastern to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's so yeah. fire. Shout out to the oboe. Clarinet, clarinet is also. I mean, I guess it's not really underrated though. Like, gong. Mm. <laughs> hey, when I went to the band, I thought I was gonna be a percussion dude because I'm black. Yeah. We learned I had no yeah, rhythm. Learned I had no rhythm. It was like, no, you're not going to be a percussion dude, bro. Percussions from the xylophone to all of it is just so. Yeah. That's so cool to me, man. man. So cool. To man. Me. The fucking uh, the 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 symphony. The timpani- oh my gosh, bro. Yeah. That is the hardest instrument ever, bro. Yeah. I love that, man. Goodness yeah. gracious. Good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. People are probably watching this like, yo, these niggas are some fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Like, I'm, I, that's, that's who I am. That's who I'll be when I die. Like, <laughs> is, there, is there an instrument that you don't know how to play that maybe you want to learn or just something that you really appreciate? There's this instrument called a hurdy-gurdy. Hmm. And it's like, basically, you with this hand, you like crank this thing i don't even really know how it works and then with this hand you like play the notes and i don't know i just want to learn not to even use to record but i just want to play it herky what was it called herdy gurdy (laughs) i'm about to say herky jerky herdy gurdy okay herdy gurdy yeah it's like some real like white people middle earth like shit you know Renaissance fair. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to definitely have to look that up. Definitely have to look that up. Uh, yeah. Lastly, before we before we get off of this whole nerd tantrum about all these instruments, you know, so I'm in uh, school and I'm minoring in film, and we have to watch all these movies. I got I had to watch this movie like very beginning of the class. Don't know if you've seen it, but I feel like you would enjoy this. Uh, freaking Whiplash. Have you seen Whiplash? Uh, I haven't seen Whiplash. Mm-hmm. You liked it. <laughs> What have you heard? It's not like you heard bad stuff about it. You sound like, uh, have you heard anything good about it? No, nah, everyone everyone has said like really positive things about it. And I I just, it, yeah, I, I need to watch it. Nah, what you, what you think? What you, what you about to say? What, what, what's your, it's not like you got some resistance a little bit. No, nah, no, nah, I just know a lot of people who have like experienced that trauma. You know what I mean? You've gotcha. been like in those environments and like, uh, I don't. I don't want to watch anything that would glorify it. You know what I mean? Or not glorify it, but like, you know what I mean? I don't. I don't really want to see that. You know what I mean? I get you. I I, I get you on that. I, I wouldn't yeah. say it's glorifying. I think it's just more of a. Yeah. This right. is what happens sometimes type of thing. Exactly. But exactly. It's I can see. Glorifying. It's almost like a slave thing. Like you might not want to see slave movies anymore. Yeah. Right? For that same reason. I'm good. Like, I, I, get I, yeah. I get you. I get you. I get you. I get you. But it's it's important. Like. Yeah. 
Hey. I've seen clips. I've seen clips. <laughs> good stuff. This hey, the freaking last like uh part, like the last scene in that film. I mean, I sat up out my bed and I was like, what is this is crazy. Okay. All right. it's, it's, bro, I'm telling you, bro. Let me know when you watch it. I definitely want to hear your uh, thoughts yeah. on it. Um, but kind of speaking of slavery, uh, I wasn't going to go there, <laughs> but that's kind of crazy. <laughs> hey, Whiplash, uh, it's me a slave. <laughs> hey, that was the craziest transition <laughs> ever. Okay. But yes. watch it, but watch it, watch it, watch it. Speaking of slavery, I'm assuming your last album title, which I'm not going to try to pronounce, I'm not even going to try to do it. I haven't even heard anybody try to pronounce it, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I'm going to actually pronounce it in a minute. But I would assume that album title has like uh, it's like uh, something to do with slavery. I know you say you don't like explaining art, so maybe I shouldn't even ask that question. But no, I mean I, it's not like I'm anti-explanation. I just don't want like whatever your relationship it is to it is what is significant. You know what I'm trying can I, can like, I explain my relationship to that then? Yeah, please. So I looked up the very long German word that I had no idea how to pronounce. <laughs> still. And I seen that it meant like uh, coping with the past or dealing with the past or whatnot. And I seen that specifically for Germans, it was for the Holocaust. So I just assumed coping with the past, Holocaust, black person coping with the past, what's I guess comparable to the Holocaust, slavery. So I just yeah. assumed that's where that was going. Maybe it wasn't, but that was just my interpretation of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's definitely one way to look at it for sure. I mean. But I think it's, like, way more personal okay. than any... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there is, like, that narrative in there for any black person. But it's also not my lived experience. Like, I didn't experience slavery. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've certainly lived through the, the, the aftermath of that. But um, I don't know. Like, my last album title was called A Quiet Farewell, which is, like, <laughs> this kind of quiet leaving... Yeah, I mean, so in some ways, this was just an extension of that same emotional space I was in when I made that, that first album. But it's like, instead of leaving, it's like, okay, now how do you deal with leaving? What are the repercussions for leaving? You know? Okay, well, so, let me let me go off of that. So you say that it's almost like a continued existence within that same universe. You also yeah. continue certain ideas from that. Onto yeah. here. So is that is that kind of like bringing that together yeah. like that? Yeah. But also like dance hall shit, it's like right, they have like rhythms and it just will be the same song. Same same rhythm, like but different co- different lyrics, different you know. Yeah, so no, I know exactly what you mean. In Florida yeah. people love dance hall. Also <laughs> people in Florida love New Orleans, just the oh, bounce. people love. Yeah, so bounce, bounce is very similar, where it will yeah. sound similar, but it'll be very different lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So I know exactly what you're talking about when you say that. Yeah. For sure, yeah. that is fire. That is fire. Is this something that is almost like a freaking com- Marvel comic universe, like an MCU, where nah, it's like? Nah. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. No, there, there are no heroes. There are no villains. Like, no, there's no good. There's no good guys. There's no bad guys. For sure, for sure. I don't know if you heard that or not. It's like somebody was just shooting out of my house. What the fuck was that? I don't know what yeah. the fuck that was. Hey, if this shit ends, pri- if this shit's in abruptly, you guys know what the fuck was going. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know what that was. Anyway, um. But yes, I didn't even hear your answer because I was very preoccupied. Yeah, with Can you please run that back? I, I apologize. What did you say? No, nah, there's, there's no heroes. There's no mm-hmm. villains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, no one's, there's no good or bad. It's just what it is, yeah. So exactly what is, let me, let me, let me get all this right because I don't want to miss, <laughs> oh, yeah. miss for Dallas City thing. Acquired Farwell, 2016, yeah. 2018, Creators yeah. Speak. So, yeah. the Farwell, by the way, I always thought it was Farewell. Is there a difference between Farewell and Farwell? <laughs> yeah. Can you please explain that? Because I, I, I've got uh, Farewell with it. And actually, I misspelled Farewell oh. on the on the DSP, like when we put it into the computer. And I just kept it because I liked it. I respect it. So, there's no Farwell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no fire. All right. So, hey, is your, no, hey, I think there is a, there is a Farewell. I is, think it is a word, though. Farwell, Farewell, Apple, I mean, not Apple, <laughs> fucking tomato, tomato, same thing. Uh, but yeah, so that, did, did that, so I guess the, 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 the farewell, whatever you were leaving, was that something that was like, 
was just a hard thing to write to 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 write about that past or whatnot um and yeah like just talk about that just i guess the 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 essence of leaving yeah i mean it's very traumatic to kind of relive any type of painful experience even when you're trying to turn it into a positive artistic expression you know what i mean so but i think with with the vergangen heights of altingen <laughs> i was trying to like figure out how to go beyond like trauma you know what mm-hmm. i mean how do you deal with something painful but not end at pain you know what i mean how do you come to some other type of feeling or emotion you know so yeah. Otherwise, i think the aqf was like very just like pain 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 mm-hmm. pain yeah <laughs> Do you know that emotion you were trying to get to, like that that destination? I know it now. Mm, but at the time, um, you didn't. At the time, I didn't. I think through performing or trying to figure out what performance is to me has brought me to that place for sure. Anyone that has seen me live will <laughs> understands what, what I'm talking about. <laughs> But yeah. So is that so? Is performance something that's also like important within the whole like? Extremely. Yeah. Explain that. Why? Why is the performance so important? Because like I feel like when I created Sauce and Malone, like I actually lost control of what it is, what it is or what it what it even could could have been or could be. Mm. Um, because you know I was producing for mostly other people, so it's just kind of like what I wanted from it um, who I didn't know what I wanted you know what I mean so as soon as I had to stand in front of an audience it's like people are looking at you like what are you about to do you know what I mean so but um once I felt more comfortable in my skin and in my body I realized like I don't know what I was capable of you know what I mean I remember the first time I screamed like it was the like most surreal experience, you know what I mean? That's um, interesting. Yeah. So, I hope that kind of answers. Well, no. Question. Well, yeah, because because you said like you almost like when you created Sloss and Malone, it was almost like you. I don't know if I understood it right, but like you almost kind of got lost within that. Like, w- would you say like you couldn't? Did you get lost in that and didn't know Jasper for a second, or? No, nah, Jasper and Sloss and Malone are not. Same, not, you know I mean? but have you ever got lost into one to where you kind of couldn't tap back into the other? No, no, mm. you but I just differentiate mean, the two, yeah, yeah. I just mean that, like, I never really well, now I do. I'm just saying, when I first created Sauce Malone, I didn't really know why or what the purpose of it was or why I kept the name, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and through performance, I've been able to get a better understanding of what it is I want to accomplished through this this character you know well you say that like you know you start off producing for other people being in groups and stuff like that going yeah. now solo was that kind of yeah. like ner- was it kind of like scary a little bit or were you were you ready to start making your own body of work um i was pretty tapped i was like i'm i'm ready to do this it was very scary though to like have to believe in something i think that's the hardest part about being a solo performer you know what I mean? Like, do you really stand by what it is that you're saying? Do you really believe the lyrics that you're saying? Do you really live that? Maybe it doesn't even matter. Maybe you don't have to believe in... Maybe it's just fantasy. But I think for me, that was a big reckoning, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Well, I, mean, I feel like people are, are, are tapped in with the music and getting motivated. You got actual great artists that I respect that... I've seen they really, you know, like, like man, this guy's the man. For example, <laughs> I seen Dimaggio tweet something to the effects of like, "Sloss and Malone changed my music forever" or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if you know like what that meant because I I never asked him, but like, like, is I don't know like that impact that you're having on people. Well, let me start with him. Do you know how you impacted his music before I even go beyond that? No. I don't know, but I I did get to hang out with him in when I was in the Bay. Um, it was very sweet to me. Cool guy. Yeah, very sweet, very cool. Um, but I don't know how specifically. I mean, I'm honored, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's hard. So, and I would imagine it doesn't stop at him. So when you see these other people that I would imagine you also respect as artists, saying that you have this major impact, is that something that 
you set out to do? Because I feel like a lot of people set out to do different things in music. They mm. some people set out to impact people. Some people just set out to put out art. Some people do music, get money, you know, whatever. So like, is making this huge impact on other respected musicians? Is that something that mm. you set out to do? No, I I think I don't know. I think what I'm most interested in is like you know that moment where you're you're just like walking around and like you see something and you're just like damn like I didn't know I could do it that way mm. you know what I mean yeah that's like what I what I chase I think through any artistic practice that like really it doesn't have to be something dramatic either it can just be something really simple like damn I didn't know I could fold my clothes like that or like I didn't know like I don't know no I get I, I, I feel, yeah, I feel I like no, cause I was about my fault. I didn't mean to cut you off. You about to say something? No, 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 that's 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 it. Well, no, I was gonna say like, so this is gonna be a very weird example when I'm on the pool. But I interviewed somebody a very long time ago, a producer named Slate the Monster, who used mm-hmm. to uh, produce for Young Thug, and he said Young mm-hmm. Thug would sometimes lay on the ground, close his <laughs> eyes in the middle of the studio, to get influence. Let's go. Let's Just go. lay on the ground go, and pop go. back up and be like, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I say that to say, you say yeah. you can go around and you see something like, damn, I know I could do it like that. Where do you gain inspiration from that might be from like just not conventional ways? So it may not be like music, TV, other people. Like maybe it's just going out looking at trees or something. Like where do you exactly. get that? That's what it is. I think it's just like chasing little interests, mm. and then the interests just kind of grow as you dedicate more time to whatever the interest is like. Uh, I know this is like a weird plug, but like my honestly, my Twitter is like how I keep track of. I was gonna my, bring it up. I was gonna bring your Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like I just like like lately I've been obsessed with like fission because like fission sounds like vision. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's fission is like this beautiful process but also really destructive you know fission is like birth you know what I mean like but then it's also like bombs you know what I mean it's like but then it's like so then how do you turn that into like music or sound or that process you know what I mean so usually it just starts at something kind of kind of stupid or not stupid but just kind of you know simple got you See, I'm more of a I'm a I'm a, like an Instagram user. If I use any social media, I'm probably on Instagram. So I've never really been on your Twitter, literally until today. So I go on your Twitter. I'm like, this brother YouTube history section got to be the most interesting thing. Like I know the recommendation, bro. You was posting videos with 170 views. I'm like, how do you, how do you know this exists? How do you find videos with 30 views, bro? Just. <laughs> I don't actually I don't even know to be honest. <laughs> I'm finna pull out one specifically. It was like I don't know if it was a girl. I think I think like the pro picture was a girl. She was just like walking on like the ground and oh, cracked. Yeah. Okay, th- okay. So that's an artist that I really love. Okay. Yeah, yeah and that's a piece that he did. I was looking for videos like documentation of that piece and that was someone went to go see it and this videotaped it. He's a visual artist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name again? I gotta look him up. Pierre Hui? Q? Hui? I'm imagining French. French. It has to be French. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. H U G. Ah, fuck. H U G Y H E. Okay, okay. I'm about to tap yeah. in. I'm about to tap yeah. in. Because yeah. going through your. I mean, I'm just seeing so much random stuff. I see. <laughs> I'm looking at this one video and I'm like, what is this? Then I look at the description and I'm like, wait, you're affiliated with this video? It's like the ten hour marathon thing that you did? Oh yeah. Yeah, we we um I did like a, a land art piece. Yeah. But we dug this huge crater and um this other artist, Adriana Lara, who has this um I don't know how to describe it, like it's not a persona because it's an like organization <laughs> mm. <laughs> kind of a, but red the name is red so red social and um we were supposed to have a 24 hour concert at the crater but it didn't work out so we got this band Reynolds 
to play their music for 24 hours and it just played into the crater so mm. that's hard yeah that's cool it's really loud too supposedly it was like insanely loud how did that yeah. work like 24 like do they take breaks or they're just 24 hours just going crazy it didn't last for 24 hours it was too cold uh, it so was that's like why it's only 10 hours yeah it was sub-zero so they packed it up <laughs> <laughs> But no, that is a John, cool concept. Yeah, the John who, who's the director of Midway, who organized it, uh, texted me and was like, "Hey, I'm sorry, we only made it to <laughs> the hour ten. That's still impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, still for it's ten hours. Very <laughs> no, I'm always interested in. Um, I feel like as of like five years, I'm more interested in performance art pieces and stuff like that and just like right. kind of abstract pieces at first I was like I don't get these type of things but as exactly. I get older it's so interesting. That's, kind of, that's the point though I know that sounds so stupid but I feel like those are the the most interesting things that affect me you know what I mean mm. if like I don't like something or I don't get what's going on usually that's the thing that sticks with me longer I got someone you. Yo, I love this. Like, this is my shit. Like, it just reaffirms whatever it is I know already. So it's kind of like, what even is the point mm. of of liking something that is like, you know what I mean? Like, I it's gotta, too easy. To I gotta, yeah. I'm gonna text you some Alan Resnick videos. The guy I was talking Yo, about. I think you're going please, to love you, this guy. Bro. This guy is, he's out there. Uh, he is very, I love very this. out I love there. To. He's, he's I'm gonna watch the, the interview for sure. I'll text you. I'll text your interview, and I'll text you like the craziest thing he did. Like he's one of the dudes that, like, for example, he has a this, this one short film on Adult Swim called like People Are Living Here, something like that. And it's a ten minute little short film, but there's so much you have to catch. And if you catch this, it's like one little part where it's a website created for this 10 minute video and it's a big long website and to crack the code of the website then you're introduced to another it's like this whole thing and it's just like and he yeah. told he said he told adults about this and it's like you're wasting your time nobody's gonna care about this people yeah. loved it and it's just stuff like that it's like that's cool to me like the fact that you put so much effort and just this minute detail not even knowing if anybody's gonna realize it and there's like literally three hour essays on that like that's the coolest <laughs> stuff to me and I feel like your music for example, how long is the last time? Like 32 minutes, something like that? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little bit less than that. It's, it's, it's not that long, basically. Yeah. So, not a long album whatsoever, or EP, EP album? What, what do you call it? No. You know what <laughs> Not a long <laughs> album. Yeah. But there's so much within every little song, even if it's little small vocals, or if it's just mm -hmm. these instruments, the way you layered it. So, I think the same thing with Ala Resnick, where it's like, 10 minute little video and if you're not paying attention you're just gonna think it's a weird video same thing with this album you, you listen to it oh this is a good album but if you're not really paying attention to it you're not catching just the small little things that you're tying in from the last album and making it part like what, what is it uh, the, the Wake part 2 and 3 yeah, yeah, that sounds yeah. like the burial of a Haitian military <laughs> lieutenant that sounds like the burial of like just the top ranking <laughs> Haitian soldier and yeah. it's so beautiful just the <laughs> like that is so beautiful to me and I just feel like the 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 small detail you put into it is beautiful well, I just want to say thank you man but not everyone's got time for that that's another thing that is like, a fact you know what I mean like I don't think what I'm doing is exceptional at all trust me oh, it is like, it is I'm not going to let you say that but <laughs> it is people got places people got to be somewhere people got to do stuff and it's a luxury to sit around and like postulate and like think about shit like this yeah. that's my point so, it's, it's like it's like the if you know you know thing you know what I'm saying like if you catch you catch it if you don't you don't and it's good either way it's good even if you don't catch all that stuff it's yeah. even better if you do catch the stuff so that's why I feel like the genius comes into it because I feel like some people try to do too much and you have to pay attention to everything to understand yeah. it, you know versus you you can just sit back and throw that album on be cleaning the house and enjoy it or you could just yeah. sit down and actually put some headphones on and really dive into it so Hey man, yeah. shout out to you. you. You you did your thing with them with them albums, my boy. You know what Thank I'm saying? You. <laughs> Can we talk about some of my favorite songs on those albums, if you don't mind? Oh, man? Please. I mean, first of all, Smile Six. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chef's Kiss, my boy. Thank you. Smile Thank Six you. is crazy. I don't know if you have any like 
stories on how that came about, but just the melodies, everything about that is hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be completely honest, I mean, I was listening to those two singles that Frank released, Frank Ocean released, um, I can't, In My Room, and I can't remember. That's what I know you're talking about. Yes, the other one. Yeah. PHL. And I just honestly wanted to make a song like that. Mm. That's it. There's no, like, I mean, there's deeper complexities, whatever, blah, 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 blah. but like, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Cause I, that's the weirdest thing, bro. Every time I interview somebody, I think it's like, oh, this guy's a mind blowing creator. If it's an artist or whatever, and I'm like, hey, so how did you come up with this mind blowing thing? Like, I just did it. It's always it. I'm thinking it's gonna be like, yeah, so I was sitting. There. You know what I'm saying? It's always just yeah. these basic. Just, yeah. You feel me? Like, do you, do you think there's a a pattern to that? Like, why just sounds like I don't know. The most complex things are just the most interesting things. They don't usually have crazy backstories like that. It's just like, I just created this because I wanted to. Maybe the things that resonate the most with people. Mm. Most simple. Mm. So I got some some long-ass, boring-ass stories for you. <laughs> I got, like, other shit that it's just like... Um, but I think maybe that's true somehow. You know I mean? Well, Often, keep it, keep it simple, stupid. For sure. I, I yeah. need the story on why the... The last ten seconds of my feet tired isn't a full song. That the last ten seconds with the, I'll I'll play it for you. Oh, I, I got you. It was the uh, hold on. See, I don't even know the the tight the titles are so crazy and stupid. They are very long. They are very long. This right here. Oh yeah, I mean that's just DJ Screw. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like just you know, chop and screw. Like just make it slow. And hey, we might need to screw the whole damn album if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. fire. I didn't realize that was kind yeah. of screwed up. I didn't realize what you did right there. Yeah, just make it slow. That's hard. That's what yeah. you did to that. <laughs> it's a different yeah. instrumental underneath that. No, it's right? different. It's slightly different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is slightly different. But I mean, the idea, the, gotcha. the, the energy is DJ screw. Yeah. That is hard. That is hard. Is there? Is there elements of like, cause like screw is a very different subgenre within rap. You know what I'm saying? Like you could be a mm -hmm. rap fan and not like that at all. Yeah, so yeah. is there other genres or subgenres of rap or pop or whatever that is your favorite to include in your music? Cause I do know you have like a, your, your own type of reggae song. You know what I'm saying? Like you have like, you get in that bag or whatnot. So is there a certain genre that you love including within your genre? <laughs> I'm I'm really trying to tap into this this genre called machina. It's like this this like northern English like rap music, but it's like over like rave like mm. rave. This shit is like fucking crazy. Sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think I'll ever get to that, but it's something I think a lot about actually. Machina machina. I think it's yeah machina. How do you find out about it? My friend Hector is um, a videographer, documentary filmmaker, and he did a documentary on Machina, and he put me onto it. Is that on the yeah. internet somewhere? I kind of want to watch that. Yeah, I think it's it's on Boiler Room. Okay. Yeah. Machina. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you if you do that, I definitely want to. No, like... I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever do it, but I, I think about it. A lot. You appreciate it, basically. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I feel like what makes your the music so interesting to me is that you kind of you live within two spaces you live within your music sounding very beautiful and also very like hopeless it's like it's weird because like oh this is so beautiful but it also feels like i'm spiraling downward you know it's it's a very weird thing i don't know if that's your conscious effort to do that but mm. that's my interpretation of a lot of the music is this is beautiful, but it also is, like, depressing. <laughs> you know, at the same time. I, I don't really want that, to be honest, though. Interesting. Like, I'm not interested in that. To be, to be, I mean, I, that's just where the, the, the energy of the music is coming from, for the most part. But I don't want to, like, bring depression or, 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 or channel that into my music anymore. To be honest, like, I don't... It's exhausting. Mm. You know what I mean? Like... Life's too short. I was, that, that is a fact. Because I don't want to... 
I feel like depression, very bad connotation. But yeah. within the music, I don't know, it's just interesting. Like the way that you can live between, because usually when you hear depressing music, it's just depressing. It's yeah. not often that I hear depressing music, or not even depressing music, it's just, it's very, it's just dark sometimes. And it's just like, yeah, yeah this is dark, but also very beautiful. Usually music yeah. is usually beautiful or dark. Living between yeah. those two spaces is very interesting to me. You said it comes from like a, a true place. Is it coming from a place of like you're torn between the two? Is it like like how do you live between well, those? That's just how shit is. I feel like that's relatable to a lot of people. You know, for sure. It's never like good or bad. It's just it's, just, it's you know what I mean. It's life. Yeah, <laughs> it's life. It's a good point. Yeah. So that's my point. Like, like imagine being happy forever. God damn, that would be fucking. Oh my god. Not gonna lie. So, that would be crazy. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That sounds kind of fire, bro. Being happy forever, bro. So. That's like <sighs> psycho. <now. laughs> I don't know, man. Being happy forever sounds fire. I get what you're saying because, like, you need the yin and the yang or whatever, but. I'm a happy nigga, man. I like to stay happy, man. But I feel you. I feel yeah, you. but also the sad moments bring more poignancy to the happy moments. Fuck it. I want to be happy. <laughs> hey, fuck it. Hey, just give me happy 24-7. No, all right. The, the, what is that Pharrell song? Like, that shit is kind of <laughs> demonic, yo. I'm serious. Like, that Pharrell song is like really scary. <laughs> like, yo. Hey, you know what's funny? I remember that song was popping about oh, that song's good, but then when it like became popular for too long, people started to get annoyed with that song. I was the only nigga that was like, "This song is still fire to me. I love this yeah. song." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is funny, man. No, I could definitely see in some weird, twisted way that song being used in like a horror movie or something. You know, like guy just like on some Groundhog Day type stuff where he's just waking up to that song every day. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm really, I really am saying. <laughs> oh, man, that is super duper funny, man. Um, I guess, I, I didn't even, I don't know, my mind just went to this. But speaking of somebody who I feel like also makes this sad but beautiful music, somebody else you follow. Maybe you don't know who this is either. You don't know anybody you follow. But I, <laughs> I think you do know her. Um, I don't know how to say, I don't know how to pronounce her name correctly, but it's Z-S-E-L-A. Zayla. Oh, Jayla, that's how you said that? Jayla, it's like J- Jayla. Jayla, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Beautiful music, beautiful music. Have you guys ever worked together? <laughs> that's like my, that's like my soul partner. Really? Yeah, that's like my, um, that's like my person. Yeah. Like that's like you. But it goes beyond that. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. It's gotcha. not like. But that's your lady, is what you said. But it's beyond that. But it's beyond. But I get. I, I, I got you. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. It's like not gendered like that. See you know what I mean? It's not like oh, like I get what you said. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but yeah, I mean, her music is like it comes from like. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how I found her. This is like when she um when she dropped her EP. Was that like 2020 if I'm not oh, yeah. yeah. No idea how I found that. But I found that and I was like, I don't know who this is, but this needs to be way bigger than what it is. This is crazy. Let me tell you something, Eric. <clears throat> Her new album? Crazy. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's all I'm going to That's all you're going to say. Hey. Hey, since you are, you know, I need I might need you to middleman that interview for me. I gotta get that interview with <laughs> her. I need to speak. I mean, she was she was cooking on that on that EP, so I can only imagine her fleshing out a whole album. I must. I, can we assume that you're on there? Uh, are, are you doing anything on there? Yeah, I have some 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 stuff, but very like background. Yeah. You know okay, I mean? okay. Okay. Like, okay. You know what I mean? But yes. I'm, I feel lucky to be a part of it. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go, man. I can't <laughs> wait to hear. It. I can't wait to hear, it, man. That is, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Are you coming up with it? Do you have anything, uh, you know, yep. in, in the works? Yeah. I do. What's going I have on? An al- I, have, I have an album I've been working on for like three, 
three years now. Mm. Uh, and I don't know when it's gonna. I'm still figuring it out. But I know what it's about. I have the title for the album. Um, it's like very inspired by like Renaissance stuff mm. like and shit. Very inspired by castles. Um, castles. Yes, castles. Um, so it's coming together. I got, I got like. I got like six songs done so far. Okay. So I have a long way to go. Hey, don't rush yeah. it. Don't rush it. Hey, we here. We're going to be here. Uh, don't rush it. I'm not rushing that shit. <laughs> hey, let that thing breathe. So we yeah, definitely going to yeah. be here for so, for so. Um, you know, it's funny you say you like castles. I was going through your Twitter. You also said something that inspired you that damn near gave me PTSD because I had to take a class about this last year. And the uh, homework was just so stupid. You said you're a yeah. big, big rock guy, like actual rocks. Oh my god, rocks! Yo, Jeez. I didn't want to see a rock after that. I took it was an earth space yeah, science was, class. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was so done with rocks. <laughs> nah, rocks are amazing because they're like <clears throat> both very dead and like very alive at the same time. Do you know what I mean? But also, like I think about rocks as like metaphor for like rock music. Like it's literally rocks, rock. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, rocks. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, man, I got two questions for you, and I'm going to let you go because I appreciate you for even, you know, giving, you, giving me some time. It's a pleasure. Time, I mean, I enjoy speaking with you, too. Hey, so. man, hey. Definitely got it. <laughs> definitely, definitely appreciate this. Uh, but another person on the first album that, I mean, this guy, Fire, Maxo. Mm. That guy, Maxo, yep. doesn't miss, bro. I mean, yep. every time I hear Maxo... He is one of them ones, and he yeah. he went off on your album. That was fine. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that song came together because I wanted to repurpose another verse that he did. Mm. Yo, just send me. Can you send me the acapella? He was like, Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Came out fire. Yeah, it, it, it came out beautiful. fire. It came out fire. Beautiful. And that's why I yeah. said this is very interesting that you can live between those two spaces of just the beautifulness and, you know, that other side. So I guess going from what you said, will you be, will this album, I would assume, it sound different from the last two? Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, the process of writing the music is different. Mm. So the music sounds different. I mean, I'd say like there are two like big songs and then the rest of them are pretty like written on acoustic guitar so they're they're pretty pretty different actually from I mean Vergang and Heights but Walter Gun has some of the beginnings of more acoustic based music but um uh yeah I can't wait I can't wait. Honestly, I definitely forgot my last question. I have no idea what the question was anymore. If it comes to me, it'll come yeah. to me. But yeah. hey, before we get out, of, hey, before we get out of here, let the people know any any last words you got. Please let them be known, man. Ah oh, shit. Mm. Uh, um. Go do that thing that you said you were gonna go do, but haven't done yet. Mm. That's it. Hey man, that's a beautiful way to close this out, man. Thank I'm you, finna, Eric. I'm finna go do my homework because I was supposed to be doing my homework. <laughs> so that's that thing I need to go be doing. I'm finna go do my homework. <laughs> For everybody watching right now, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play, and you guys holler at your boy.